This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt. I'm your host, Brian, and I don't know where you're located, but here in Michigan, we're in the heart of winter and it is ridiculously cold outside, which as we all know, is really hard on equipment. And so today I wanted to talk about taking care of your machine, specifically from a lubricant standpoint, in the winter time and as you guys are all aware anytime we get into a discussion about lubricants of any type i always defer to my experts over at chevron so without further ado we're going to turn this over to sean whitaker from chevron and he's going to talk to us about how to take care of your machine in the winter time when it comes to lubricants but before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs, it comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. Well, Sean, welcome back to the show. We appreciate you taking some more of your time to come and educate us about lubricants. It's good to be back. So I'll just fire right into it. Um, what are the primary ways that winter affects lubricants? And specifically here, I want to talk about viscosities and what does that mean and how does that come into play? So the biggest impact that um, winter operation and low temperature operation particularly impacts lubricants is the, the, the impact that it has on its viscosity. So anybody that's put syrup on their pancakes when the when it's cold, um, you know that most fluids are thicker when they're cold than when they're, when they're warm. And that's, that's in fact a very um, important consideration in the way that we formulate fluids because we need them to be um, sufficiently viscous at high temperature, but we, we can't have them be too thick when they're at low temperature. And so we need, we need engine oils to be robust across a very wide temperature range from cold start in the winter all the way up to the high temperatures that it encounters inside the engine. Um, winter uh, tends to drive us towards alternate viscosity grades, and especially when you're talking about northern climates, either in northern part of the U.S. or, you know, most of Canada uh, needs to kind of give consideration to using a thinner engine oil. Um, the SAE viscosity grades are what uh, characterize the uh, low temperature performance. In fact, it's the, the number before the W uh, that tells us about the low temperature property. So a lower number means that it's actually uh, more fluid at a colder temperature. So to, to kind of translate that differently, a 5W40 is going to be thinner at a low temperature than a 10W30. Exactly. And so uh, actually the way it works is that we we target the same viscosity, but when we make the measurement for a 5W, we do that uh, 10 degrees colder than we do for uh, thicker viscosity grades. And so we can get down to kind of fluidity at levels as low as minus 31F um, for a 5W grade. And when we're comparing that to something more conventional like a, a 15W, which may only be fluid at uh, minus five degrees or so. Interesting. So you kind of touched on it in your answer, but let's dive a little deeper. What are some changes that contractors need to make to their PM schedule to account for these uh, temperature fluctuations? And, and I'll just kind of come out and say it. 
we're generally talking the northern states in this circumstance. For the most part, I think we could safely say southern states don't really need to do much different because they don't get those extreme temperature fluctuations. That's typically the case. I mean, and the, the one thing that we know about winter is that it is, it is unpredictable, um, but um, it's, it's easier to anticipate those cold climates when you're in the northern regions. It's pretty pretty normal for that to happen um, every year. Um, so the, the things that operators may want to think about, and this, you know, we're, we're into January now, but the things that might be as you, you get prepared for the next cold season is um, doing, you know, maintenance events before it gets too cold. Going to start fresh with um, clean oil. Um, that, that may be the, the prime opportunity to kind of revisit your viscosity grade selection. Um, if you're some, you know, an operator that uses uh, 15W40s during the warmer months, it might be a, a time to move to a 10W or a 5W30 uh, or 40 uh, for those uh, winter climates. Um, it's, it's also just good to have, you know, clean oil because one of the things that can happen as oil ages, um, it can accumulate soot, which thickens the oil even from when it's fresh, um, or, you know, oxidative breakdown, which can also thicken the oil. And I, it's probably not the, the right time of year to kind of take chances or to push, push the limits in terms of your change interval. So starting fresh may in fact get you through that season and then you can, um, kind of transition back to a, a summer grade when in the spring. Gotcha. So how important is, you know, we're all familiar with cold starts in the industry and, and just from the sound of the engine, you can tell that's rough on it. But in reality, how important is uh, doing a cold start and letting that engine come up to temperature before you really start pushing the engine? And what are the dangers of not doing that? That really is the, the primary consideration of the winter and the reason why we want good fluidity. In fact, we, we do two different measurements. One, one is a viscosity measurement that allows us to understand if the engine or equipment's able to crank, right? So uh, allow it to start, but then it also needs to be pumpable um, because then it, that, that's, what starts to deliver that fluid throughout the engine and allowing, and especially, um, you know, if the, the unit has been left cold overnight and it's very, you know, cold day or you're starting up early in the morning, um, allowing it to, allowing the oil temperature to get, uh, increase, um, to a point that you know that you're getting, um, good oil films and good oil flow throughout the engine is, is very important. Um, so, not doing so, you, you, you run the risk that you've got um, parts that are inadequately lubricated for the high load operation that you may be encountering. And, and I also, again, don't want to put you on the spot like you're the expert. You should have a formal recommendation. But just kind of as a general rule of thumb, what should operators be looking for on that cold start as an indicator of, OK, the, the engine sufficiently warm that we can start to do something with it? Keep your eye on the gauges. I mean, you can tell from the, the overall the coolant temperatures and if you've got access to oil temperature um, kind of monitoring, kind of look for those to to reach, you know, up into the, the hundreds at a minimum just to, to make sure that you've got good fluidity. And that, that's certainly good practice before you start um, really putting on significant load to the engine because you need to make sure that you, you've got adequate oil flow and that you've ensured that um, there's good pumpability. Okay, perfect. Uh, my next question is kind of shifting gears a little bit to a different section of the machine. We've been talking primarily engine oils. Uh, any special considerations when it comes to hydraulic oils on these machines? So hydraulic fluids do kind of behave in the same way that, that the engine oils do um, in that they, they do get thicker uh, as they get colder. Um, now, we don't use the same classification system, so the, the SAE viscosity grades that we use to describe um, motor oil fluidity don't really apply necessarily to hydraulic fluids, but uh, the one thing to look for in hydraulic fluids is the VI, or viscosity index. Uh, that's, that's a key consideration for um, evaluating its robustness to temperature change. Uh, conventional hydraulic fluids may have a, a VI that is in the range of 100 to 120, whereas um, some of the more uh, high quality ones that are uh, geared towards uh, 
better low temperature protection, maybe in the 140 to 150 range. And they can go up from there, uh, really depending on the application. And I think it's um, it's a good opportunity to engage with your oil marketer and kind of have that discussion about your operating climate, your operating tendencies to make sure that you've got the right fluid selected for your uh, particular application. My final question, and we may have kind of already covered it in our previous conversation, but if there's anything else you want to add, are there any special differences between some of these oils that are made to run in extremely cold temperatures, or is it primarily just the viscosity that's going to be different? So it is the viscosity that's different, but um, kind of the building blocks that we use to get there are are, are different. So one of the, the primary things that are used in these um, you know, lower viscosity engine oils is that it's typically where we use uh, synthetic base oils because they, they have that higher viscosity index, which means, in fact, it just means that they have a, a flatter response to temperature. It means that they can maintain that fluidity across a much broader range of temperatures. And so the, the 5W30s and 5W40s, which are the, the good choices for use in cold climates, tend to, to be full synthetics. Um, 10W30s are oftentimes uh, part synthetics, but we're, we're utilizing um, synthetic base oils, which have been sort of purposely uh, formulated to deliver those, those good low temperature characteristics in combination with um, additives. So we use things like pore point depressant additives, which um, help suppress the uh, pore point and allow it to be fluid, even just for when you're filling, you know, filling the engine uh, full full of the fluid that it needs to be, you know, pourable. Um, so it's a variety of things, and it's a combination of those base oils and additives that are utilized to. Uh, get to those uh, properties that we're targeting. So I know I told you that was my last question, but I, I came up with a spinoff yeah. question. <laughs> sure. Because you're generally going in, in one of those circumstances from a either partial synthetic or a just traditional natural, would you call that a natural oil? What's non-synthetic? Uh, 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 yeah, mineral oil or, or, or conventional oil is typically what we call the, the non-synthetics. Okay, so if we're going from, from a partial synthetic or a, a more natural oil, to a full synthetic, is that an oil change that you would want to do more of a full flush before you filled the system back up, or or how critical is that to really get all of that old oil out before you switch to the new oil? Well, it's always the best practice to make sure that you're clearing out as much of the old oil, you know, so that you're you know, freeing it from the contaminants and the other, you know, byproducts that have accumulated in the system. But in typically that it's the considerations aren't any different when you're moving from a conventional oil to a synthetic. I mean, it's just, um, it, it does kind of make sense to do it when the oil is relatively warm um, because you're, you're again, getting better fluidity, you're draining oil faster and, and more robustly when the oil's at a little bit higher temperature than if it had been sitting out uh, cold overnight. Um, Another good reason to kind of take care of those those PMs before things get really gnarly. Well, Sean, as always, thank you for being on, and I appreciate you sharing your advice with us. All right. Well, stay warm. Well, thank you again to Chevron and Sean specifically for lending his expertise to talk to us about this subject. I hope this has maybe helped you guys as you think about a, a maintenance regimen for your equipment over these winter months when it is so extremely cold. I hope this has been helpful as always. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next episode of The Dirt.